some of the critical food uh, uh, and, and other things that our citizens uh, need. Uh, while I'm here and I'm in the mood to ask, I have to tell you there's one other great ask I have of you. Uh, and that great ask is that we are looking to really expand our summer youth employment program. Uh, there are some foundational issues that we are addressing. I'll we'll speak in a moment about our uh, legislative agenda, including some of the things we're doing in education and other areas. But the summer youth employment program is going to be critically important um, to empower youth and to really growing uh, the kind of workforce that will be desirable for business. And so we are currently serving about 3,000 youth. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I was ashamed. And the shame is the right word to learn that our neighbors in Baltimore City, for example, have been able to employ 8,000 children. And so I have to ask us, how is it in a jurisdiction uh, as, as affluent as Prince George's County, how is it that we can only serve 3,000? I believe our targets have, have, have to increase. And uh, so we are already, uh, this summer, planning to double that number to 6,000. So we are hoping to serve 6,000 children uh, we desperately need your support and help to make sure that this happens um, so that all of our children in the county, it is our eventual goal, who desire to have an experience over the summer, will have that experience. Children between the ages of 16 and 21 are what we currently serve, but it is our goal to grow that to 24. We have a whole disconnected youth population that we lose, and we lose those young people between those ages of uh, 18 and 24 years old, so it is our goal also to increase the age to 24 and to add other elements to it, wellness elements. Uh, there are a whole number of disconnected youth who do not have their GED. Well, this will be the opportunity also for us to make sure we're preparing the workforce in that way. We've already started with some additional training that we're giving our uh, young people to be prepared to go into the workforce. But we are dead serious about this program. Uh, but we are going to need the support of the business community. So I would love to reach out um, to, to everyone here to see how you can assist us in helping with our young people. Uh, go quickly, because I know you know you invited uh, these lawyers. They talk forever and ever and ever, right? And so I'm just really quick about our legislative agenda. Uh, and education is, is fairly clear uh, that we have some, some critical needs. One is that we need school buildings that are befitting of our children, that speak to their dignity. Uh, Dr. Bolson will tell you, I believe we're somewhere in the neighborhood $8 billion behind uh, on our capital needs and this is something that really we just cannot continue uh, and if we want to create the kind of renaissance that will allow business to continue to grow and will allow us to attract to us the people we want to live and to invest in Prince George's County we have to do so through creating a renaissance in our school system I believe that renaissance will happen when we make the proper investments in school construction when we repair our schools and build new schools we'll be able to continue to attract families to come back to our school system many of whom have gone off to private schools. And so the school construction budget is important. The governor has dedicated this year $72 million extra dollars to come out of the lockbox dollars uh, to help with school construction. But in addition to that, uh, we're going to be fighting hard, Ryan and, and the rest of us, to make sure that Kerwin, uh, that we fund Kerwin. Uh, they were telling us that we can't get it done this year, but we have to get it to the classroom. Prince George's County educates the largest number of disabled students in the state of Maryland. We educate also the second, the largest number of students who speak English as a second language. And 62% of our kids are on free and reduced lunch. We have a struggling population of kids, and we're going to need to continue to make those investments. I'll say this quickly. Youth sports is an area that is new for us. We have uh, put in a bill this year, and I want to say this to our, uh, I also want to thank our chair, Michael Jackson, who's here today, and of course the senator. Uh, that we are now refocusing on youth sports as a part of our education agenda because we believe that character is as important as anything else we do and the best place for us to build character, the kind of character that will build strong students is through youth sports. And so we're asking Maryland National Capital Park and Planning to expand its mission statement to include youth sports and to be able to thereby tap into the resources that they have there to build a program that is first class for our children. Infrastructure, we're going to be focusing. Uh, you, you can't believe how many people talk to me about trash and litter. I want to thank the chief, or maybe blame the, the, the chief for, um, for giving us the, the platform now to move away from talking about crime and corruption. And now, when I go to get my coffee at 7 Eleven, they tell me if I don't change the, the litter in the county, they're going to run me right out of Prince George's County. So, we have a real job to do there uh, and to make sure that we're making the, the investments we need to continue to grow Route 1. Uh, where the businesses are growing, 
Marina Drive is another area where we're going to be really looking for some funding near the new capital region of our medical facility and making sure that 210, oh my gosh, where there's three babies were killed uh, coming home from church with their parents, making sure that we make the right investments there. Um, and I, I've heard from folks that they're driving more slowly on 210 today. The chief scared of the death and told them if they didn't slow down, he was going to uh, to enforce there. But anyway, my time has expired. I want to thank you all again um, for really, for all the support that you gave me as state's attorney. As you can tell, I am on fire and so excited um, to serve as your county executive. I am so proud, I couldn't be more proud of Prince George's County uh, and its future. And I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve. Thanks so much.